They recycle old potato chip bags. Yeah. And Frito Lay and other companies, if they have defective mm -hmm. wrappers, they just send them to Paracycle. And normally this roll comes out to like here and it weighs like. How'd you get them? I went to TerraCycle and they had this big warehouse of old wrappers. So they just gave me like rolls and rolls and rolls. Oh, and yeah. yeah. And then um, I'm making dresses out of them. What is that material? Milo? I don't know. I guess so. I think it's a bag. <laughs> it's like plasticky in my life. Yeah. So now who buys these and wears them? Uh, the stuff that I make out of them? Yeah. No one buys them yet. But every year around Earth Day, we do a trash in show, which mm. is fashion made out of trash. And we make clothes like that dress right there. Mm -hmm. um, and we do like a runway show, and it's to raise awareness about like recycling and sustainable design. Mm -hmm. So I have that I made like four years ago. And as you can see, it holds up pretty well. So I'm going to start selling them after the show online. But I'm going to try to charge like three or four hundred bucks and then give the money to charity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. But people ask for them. Mm -hmm. I wear them on Halloween, and I won a costume contest once at an art yeah, gallery. Because they're decorative. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody else has them. So. But I can actually, I was just playing with teeth on this one, but I can sew them with a sewing machine. <laughs> and I, like, made a teeth dress out of mm -hmm. smart food mm -hmm. bags already. Yeah. Cool. Years ago, it was so funny. Because we had uh, paper clothes. For fun. Mean, or for your real wardrobe. Yeah, people wore them. <laughs> that sounds uncomfortable. <laughs> hey, kitty. Hey, kitty. Take the cat. Take the cat. <laughs> You're taking the cat. <laughs> so could you Good morning. do that same description? Yeah. Right. To the video camera? Let me do it first. So you can see. You are reading. <laughs> so, so, is she in the way? No. Okay. So um, this is a dress I made out of recycled or upcycled clean waste. All of these straws were donated to me from Mo's Southwest Grill. When they order the children's cups for their soda machine, it comes with 2,500 or however many um, straws to go along with the cups, and they say they don't have room on the counter for the colored straws. So I got about 5,000 straws every three days from Mo's for a couple months, and I basically just taped them to yarn so that they would dangle. So this is one piece of yarn with six straws taped to it, and then I would sew the yarn into a scrap piece of fabric that I had that I made into a dress. And then this is an old shipping envelope with the UPS label still on it. <laughs> and it gets worn in the Trash and Fashion Show, um, which is a, a fundraiser event for the Sustainable Farm School in West Hartford, and we give the um, ticket sale proceeds to kids for scholarships to go to the farm school. So to talk about our the the whole lean startup. This, by the way, is like volunteer work and not my business <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> at right. all. Right. Um. So. But how, how? Maybe how did you how how did your business business? Yeah, I wanted to get like an example of what I'm working on. Maybe I can put these over here so you can get a picture. Mm -hmm. but, um. So I've been screen printing since I was ten years old mm -hmm. at my dad's print shop. And I decided um, three years ago to start a business doing, well, I wanted to make all kinds of things, home decor and art and printed clothes and, and like real handmade clothes, um, because my thing in life is making things and mm -hmm. upcycling. And I learned a lot from my grandma, how to sew and whatnot. So you can pretty much give me anything and I can turn it into something. A good example would be my light table right here. This is actually made out of old shipping pallets and a scrap piece of glass I got at a thrift store. So my dad and I just put this together, um, and it's a functioning light table. So I just, I'm like really into like upcycling stuff, and that's how I was able to start my business on the cheap, because I could make anything I needed. <laughs> um, so the screen printed apparel really took off, um, more so than like the furniture and the home decor and the art. So I decided um, probably last October that I was going to buy out my dad's print shop and just focus on screen printing and put everything else aside. So I still have the original business, which is Sugar Plum, and I still do art, home decor, and like handmade fashion, but it's really more of a hobby business for me now. And um, I founded Cinder and Salt, which is uh, the company I named, or I, the company name I gave it for the print shop, and I do custom printing, but I'm really focused on building my own brand. 
So one of the things I'm working on this year is starting to wholesale to other stores. And I started with my necktie collection. And I just buy pre-made neckties and I screen print on them. And I have about 20 different designs. Um, and I just got my first order from New Britain Museum of American Art, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. So, and then this is my kitten tie, which is my best-selling tie. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I have like a full array of skinny ties. And I, I started making skinny ties because my boyfriend a couple of years ago would wear skinny ties, but they're really hard to find. And we'd end up having to buy them online from overseas and whatnot. And I was like, you know what? Somebody should start making awesome skinny ties. So I decided to do that. Um, there's a real like hole in the market. So that's actually one aspect that's done really well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just to, to back up a step, when you started, you, you, didn't, you didn't have a lot of money invested. Right. I had zero money. Um, and I went to a bank and I talked about like getting a business loan. And he was like, "Well, we only know it's, it's a pretty small bank." He's like, "We only give out business loans between five and fifteen thousand. And he's like, "But you might want to go with a personal loan, and we can give you like three thousand. And I was like, "What is three thousand even going to get me? I could just use my interest-free credit card, you know that five on five grand on it." So I decided that I didn't even want to be tied to a bank and like an institution like that, and that I should just do everything myself because I'm really into being like upcycled and waste not want not and I just don't want to rely on anybody for anything. So um, with the inventory that I already had that I had built up over a couple years of doing fashion shows, I had a big party at my house here and invited all my friends and relatives and I was like, I'm starting my new business, come shopping for Christmas. And I made about like fifteen hundred dollars, which was pretty exciting. And everybody was really supportive, but I immediately put that money as a down payment for a store and I was gonna open the store three months later. So in the next three months, I built furniture for the store because I couldn't afford retail fixtures. So my dad and I built stuff out of pallets and um, I found a bunch of stuff on eBay and Craigslist. I got this mannequin from a school, they were like throwing it away. But there was also a J. Jill store going out of business that a friend worked at and she gave me three really nice retail mannequins. So I was able to get everything I needed for like less than $300. And then as I made more sales at events leading up to this, I was able to stock up on t-shirts and other apparel. So I kind of just built my inventory throughout the course of the next two years. And it didn't really, I don't want to say my business didn't take off, it always supported itself, but last summer when I started going to Boston, um, I would do outdoor markets up there, and I would make in a weekend what I would make in a month at my store. So I decided to focus on the t-shirts, and that's when I started to switch gears, because I was like, this is something that I can make really quickly, the cost is low for me, and um, and I can wholesale it and scale my business a lot more than I can if I handmade stuff. So that was sort of the turning point last summer, in like July, when I started to think about switching things up. So it's, it's wrong to say that you're learning from your mistakes, because you're not making mistakes, <laughs> but what you're doing is... Well, you're finding out that one one technique works better than anything else. So you're building on that technique instead of instead of trying to keep going with something that doesn't necessarily work very right. well. I think that's really important, and I see a lot of people who you know are really like have a lot of heart in their business, and they, like my dad is one of those people where it just doesn't want to give up on it, and he's like really really wants it to work, and I'm like sometimes you just have to like let go of things. And I try not to be emotional about my business. Um, I think the, the most important thing is to be really passionate about something. And it shouldn't be about your paycheck. And it shouldn't be about keeping your business alive. It should be like what you're actually doing every day. So I really like making things. And I really like those things to be good for the planet. And that's really all that matters to me. So I just need to find a way to keep making things to be happy. So, you know, I have to take whatever step I need to take. But that said, I have made plenty of mistakes. <laughs> I've invested in the wrong things. Um, for example, when I go to Boston, there's a vendor fee to set up, and it's $100 for the day. I once did a music festival that they said there was going to be 50,000 people at, and it was $700 for the day. Third Eye Blind was the headlining band. It seemed like a really good, good situation, and I ended up making $100 for the course of the weekend. And I just realized you can't spend that much money on a first-time event you don't know what you're going to get. So, you know, I learned, like, what to spend my money on and what not to. Um, 
you know, the hard way. <laughs> but, not, but not too hard, because I never took out a loan. I never invested more money than I could make back pretty quickly. So that's always been really important. I don't want to lose my house. Yeah. Not that I own this. I don't want to lose my apartment by not being the only friend. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be able to feed your cat. Exactly, the beast. Yeah, so this is not, like, creepy or anything. I leave scraps of fabric for Henry to sit on because he likes to make a mess. It's not like real projects that I'm selling over here, but he lives here. <laughs>